The UK currently emits 350 million tonnes of carbon dioxide each year by burning fossil fuels for everything from food production, transport and consumer goods, to power generation, buildings and industry, and all the viewers have switched over to Love Island. Where's the remote? Quick. It's very boring, Franny. It, it's very geography GCSE, isn't it? Can't we jazz it up a bit? Need some tits or something. You know, it's the end of the world. Come on! There is morning, there is early morning, and then there's this. Right, this is what I call the sparrow's fart. But the sparrows aren't even up yet. They've just rolled over, farted, hit the snooze button. Look at that. Fucking disgusting. My tie straight. British government, the UK government, UK Parliament. Does it always stick up like that? It does. Is your sink sink to this? Yes. What the yeah, fuck yeah, is that? Nice. You, you can't shoot a documentary on that. It's a fucking disposable. It's 4K. I don't know what 4K means. Oh, can I have my man bag? I need my man bag. Ha! Ha! The British government has declared a climate emergency and has committed us. Happy? Yep. The British government has declared a climate emergency and has committed us to net zero. But what does that mean and how will we do it? Well, to achieve net zero, we not only have to drastically reduce the amount of carbon that we're letting off out into the atmosphere, we're also going to have to suck up a lot of the carbon that we've already emitted. Actually, I think this might be better on the boat. Really? You think this would be better on the boat? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Let's try that. Might it not be better for you to decide your shot list before you make me get up at 4.30 a.m.? Might it not? Okay, before we do anything else, I need a McMuffin. Mm. Sorry, uh, sorry we're late. I had to Morning, get some brekkie. There isn't a McDonald's around here for about 16 miles. It's, uh, it's madness. Hey, Franny, Franny, we're not actually going on the boat, are we? I'm not, I'm not very, you know, I'm not exactly ahoy there, you know? I'm what they call a land lover, you know? Lover. Yeah, well, can you, can you not just get the shots on the boat and I can just go and have a kip in the car or something? Franny? Fuck, oh, bro. Look at those muscles on the rope, I mean. Stand by, rolling and action. When we think of carbon capture, we naturally think of trees. But trees are not the only natural resource that have the ability to suck up our carbon emissions. The humble muscle. The humble muscle. Is that a bit shit? It sounds like a crap provincial fish restaurant. <laughs> John Holmyard has spent 10 years developing Europe's first fully offshore mussel farm, six miles off the coast of Dorset. OK. So these are, but these are just over a year old now. So how do these help us to tackle climate change? Mussels, like uh, a lot of other shellfish, build a shell which is partly calcium carbonate. So there's a lot of carbon in that. And the carbon that they put into their shells stays there technically forever, as far as our species is concerned, anyway. <laughs> Each passenger on a transatlantic flight is responsible for the release of about one tonne of carbon dioxide. A mussel can only lock away a few grams of that, but a square kilometre of farmed mussels can capture 218 tonnes, enough for a plane load of people flying to New York. If we turn a quarter of UK waters over to mussel farming, the shellfish would draw down about an eighth of our total emissions. What is this, pepper fucking pig? These graphics, they're, they're a bit CBBs, aren't they? Well, I'm, I'm literally at sea. No, no, literally, literally. Look, my dereliction of duty as an estranged father aside, I'm, look, Sandra, I'm literally saving the planet, OK? I'm, I'm capturing carbon. Yet there is a lot of seaweed, a lot of it. Okay, but don't laugh, OK? It's actually a condition. 
actually. Look, OK, Sandra, listen, I've got to go because there's a big bit of carbon coming our way. All right, I've got to go. Bye. Plenty of meat in that one. You'd be ill if you ate that raw, wouldn't you? I'll do you one. Go on, then. More of a burger and chips man myself. Oh, no. Oh, it looks like a big bogey. Oh. That's the freshest seafood you'll ever get. You'll oh, enjoy it. Fuck. It's still alive. What? This is yeah. still alive? Yeah. Well. OK, just don't look. Oh! Delicious. Oh, God, I don't know if that's the fishy bogey, the, 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 the motion of the ocean, or the state of this fucking toilet. Well, it's the McDonald's. Oh, God. Right, what's next? It's hard to believe that this tiny creature could hold the... Hang on, check the fucking script. It's hard to believe that this tiny creature could hold the key to saving all life on Earth. Is that a wrap? If humans are to survive climate breakdown, the era of endless consumption powered by cheap oil must come to a very speedy end, and we must rebuild our societies to feed, clothe and house... Oh, sorry. Sounds like a piece of piss. Doesn't it? Completely reinventing Western civilization. Well, it's not even Western, is it? It's human civilization. Um, where are we? Yes. And then to achieve net zero, we need to draw down carbon from the atmosphere. But actually, can I get a cup of tea? Seaweed ready? Yeah. Sound rolling? Yeah. And action, Jonathan. Mussels are not the only living thing that can help absorb our carbon emissions. I'm here in Cornwall to dive into the wonderful world of seaweed. Oh, fucking hell. I'm not touching it. It fucking stinks for a start. It's fucking disgusting. It gets wrapped around your legs. It's like a fucking nightmare. I don't do seaweed, all right? It's a condition. I'd rather eat a plate of yesterday's raw bogeys. My sister used to chase me down the beach with that shit. Right, let's go and get you changed for the next shot. So what hilarious costume have you got me in today? Ye yesterday it was a fisherman. What's today? Fireman? Fireman Sam? Postman Pat? French maid. Someone give me a hand, please. Can you give me a hand? It's day two of my journey and an early start to catch the low tide with Tim Van Berkel and Caro Warwick Evans from the Cornish Seaweed Company. Let's go see the seaweed then. Great. There we go. Thank you. Lovely. We free dive and hand harvest a range of different organic Cornish seaweeds. Um, for sale as a superfood. So we yes. sell it as, as food, but it has a multitude of uses, uh, from bioplastics to biofuels to... Now they're making clothes out of seaweed as well. So how does seaweed help climate change? It's a carbon sink. It absorbs um, CO2 from the ocean, mm -hmm. and it lowers, it lowers the acidification of the ocean. You don't have to grow it on land, so it doesn't need any input of energy or fuel or fertiliser, pesticides, water. Um, and it tastes amazing. Does it? Yeah, it does. Does it, though? Yeah, And what do you all, do with it? They're very, you fry very it different. Up or, or you what? can, right. yeah. So some you can fry, you can eat them raw. Like, this, this is sea spaghetti. You can eat it raw and just chop it into salads. 100% compostable packaging. What do you do with this, then? This so is... that's sea greens, and that's the one that's in crispy fried seaweed so the, uh, from the Chinese. Because I always so thought crispy well fried known. seaweed from the Chinese was not actually seaweed. It is often cabbage, right, but it you. should be okay, sea got you. greens. Also, if you feed a little bit of seaweed to cows, it reduces their methane output by 30%, which is wow. pretty good for the environment. So this stops cows farting? Basically, yeah, exactly. Wow. So if we fed this to cows, we wouldn't have to wipe out the rainforest for their feed. Yeah. And if we fed it to them, they'd emit less Methane. gas. Yeah, exactly. Or we could just not eat cows. Yeah, but we all like a burger, don't we? 
We could eat a seaweed burger. That's not going to happen. Yes, it is. Um, how are we doing, Franny? Right, let's get you snorkeled up and get you in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you got this, you got this, you got this. Come on. Come on, you're David Attenborough. You're, you're Brian Cox. Stacey Dooley, Brian Cox, you're Brian Cox. <sighs> Things can only get better. Okay. Ready? Let's go swimming. That isn't swimming in the sea. That is swimming in the channel. All right? People do that for comic relief. Can you just get in? Just get in. Okay. Fuck it up. It's cold. Mm -hmm. oh, fuck it up. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What's got? What's got? Ah! Fuck that. This is bullshit. <laughs> Have I dropped the scissors? Yeah, you dropped the scissors. <laughs> I don't give a shit about this. I don't give a shit. You know why? You know why I'm doing this. You know why I suddenly give a shit about this shit? Because everyone else has started giving a shit. It's fashionable. It's fashionable, and I'm bored, and I want a fucking BAFTA, or at least a Radio Times award. It's fashionable to give a shit, so I give a shit. But I don't give a shit. Not really. No one does. It's too fucking huge for most people to give a shit. So we do what we can. We do our bit, knowing it will do nothing at all. What the fuck am I supposed to tell my son when he asked me, what did you do to stop the climate crisis that you knew was coming for decades? Well, son, I made a documentary about seaweed and fucking mussels. Jonathan Pye saving the world one clam at a time. No, I'm going to tell him the truth. Son, I did fuck all like everybody else. Can't we just tell the truth for once? It's fucked. And now the weather, which coincidentally is the thing that's fucked. <laughs> Off. You know the difference between you and me, Franny? Most of us aren't deluded enough to think we can save the world with a bit of fucking seaweed. The Arctic is on fire. So you just carry on with your, with your bag for life and your paper straws and your fucking vegan tofu whilst driving your kids to school in a fucking Jeep if it makes you feel better. There is nothing you can do. This is just the way it is. This is capitalism, baby. Suck it up. Now, do we need any more shots or can we get the fuck out of here so we can get back to the hotel so I can have a fucking drink? Please. There's a seal. Where's Pi? I don't know. His bag's here, though. Like as a metaphor for how ordinary people now are finally starting to rise up against the political class. I could murder class. a McMuffin. 